Hey, John, welcome to Ad News TV. Hey, thank you. Thanks very much. So, listen, you uh, in, your, in your book, you've raised a couple of um, interesting um, ideas about the end of mindless consumption and, uh, and, and a new values coming through, at least in the US. Tell us a little bit about, you know, what's going on there. Yeah, in the US, I know it's a very different picture from, from how Australian consumers have sort of um, weathered and looked at, at the crisis as it affected people here. But in the US, you know, we saw $4 trillion worth of wealth evaporate in rent. But what ended up happening is that people began to realize that they didn't have this endless stream of, of credit. And so they started to shift from a credit to a debit society. And as a result, people became much more strategic about the way that they spent. Mm. So I guess, is that more than a function of the reality of, of their financial capabilities and depth of depth of coin or pocket than right. it is about a value shift? I guess, I guess right. you're asked that all the time, eh? Right. Well, so, so that's the interesting thing. So during the, the crisis, what happened was is that people had to reset their expectations and, and become much more thrifty. But what we started to see is that as the data unfolded and the crisis started to, to ebb, people started to really distrust institutions. We found that trust down and declined against businesses and government by over 50%. And there was this trust virus that swept through categories. Mm -hmm. So I would have expected to see it in BAV and automotive and financial services where all the TARP spending was happening. But we saw it in fast food, communications, telco mm -hmm. and the like. And what basically was happening is that people were saying, I'm actually looking for companies to align with my values. And when we talk about values, particularly in the U.S. at least, um, it gets very politicized. It's like liberal or conservative. These were sort of common sense values, things like community, stewardship, self-reliance, hard work. And they were looking for companies and brands to sort of reinforce and hold up to those principles. What's happening was, as we started to size this audience, we found that there was 55% of people um, that were part of this spend shift movement. In Australia, it's about 51% as we looked at the, um, the size. And that's, again, really important. These values aren't radical. They're just things like, I don't necessarily trust companies. I want companies to actually understand the things that are important to me. And those are the companies that I'll support. What are the implications for brands and, and, and companies? Is there, is there, are they really having to change how they uh, create products and services, or is it the way they spin them? I think there's a couple of big implications. I mean, number one, marketing has got to move from words to action. So in the data, we found this shift from kindness and empathy being up as a desired brand attribute of companies by 391%. Wow. It was the single biggest shift we'd seen in our data going back to 1993. And so, you know, in the States, for example, there were programs like Hyundai's Buyer Reassurance Program. Yes, yeah. You know, Bank America Keep the Change. That was where they, they promised the back refund if they lost their job. Is that a small tactic. It, they grew 12% in a dismal U.S. automotive market. And wow. it was based on this sense of empathy. You know, that I understand where you're coming from. So I think, number one, actions become really important. And so companies that we interviewed for the spend shift, and we interviewed 50 companies from startups all the way up to, you know, Microsoft and, and Dell and, and uh, Ford, we saw really interesting large companies adapting to this shift. I mean, I'll give you a couple examples. I mean, one was, um, was Ford. We spent time in Dearborn with Scott Monty, and he's head of social media. And he created a Ford Fiesta launch program that was really unique. It was all about transparency um, with their customers. So usually when you test drive a car, it's hidden behind a track somewhere and no one can see it. He actually put 50 cars out on the road on the condition that people um, provide feedback to them only through Twitter so everyone can uh, see the feedback. Uh -huh. And what he ended up finding, it was kind of funny, he uh, told us this story where there was a trending topic on, on Twitter that said, really enjoy the Ford Fiesta, but the cup holders... In his words, uh, the cup holders suck. Oh, so he was saying, what's wrong with the cup holders? Well, what they un uncovered is that a lot of millennials, 20-somethings, were driving these cars. And as they took turns, their energy drinks were flying out of the cup holders because they were built for Cokes and Pepsis. So it was a fast learning yeah. thing. But the point he said is that R&D and engineering got involved, and they started to actually re react and, and work with customers in real time to solve problems.